needs. Today we're going to take a look at uh, cylinder repair replacement on a two post car lift. Alright, now we're going to take a look at the lift. Most of them are very similar in design, so hopefully this will be of help to you. Uh, we'll pretend that this lift has a seal leak, which means oil is coming out of the top of the cylinder as you're trying to lift something. Normally that means uh, this, it's just worn out, a piece of dirt got in there, tore up the seal. Uh, for some reason, oil is bypassing the seal, coming out through the top of the cylinder. This cylinder is installed. Maybe kind of hard to see, but it's just sitting in the bottom of the post. There's, there's nothing holding it in there, it's just sitting there. Once we remove the fittings, we're going to lift this cylinder up and out, and then we'll take it apart. Here's the opposite side of the cylinder. As you can see, there's a piece of piping coming out, and on this one, an elbow, and then connects to a hose. So what you're going to do is, with the uh, post, with your mast all the way down, and then lift it manually up to the first notch where the safety notch is. Once that's held in place, then you'll go ahead and remove the fittings and then the oil will leak out but make sure both of your carriages are locked into position that way they won't fall down and more oil come out so you're going to uh, loosen this fitting and remove this fitting and this section of pipe once you've removed that then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to come over to the other side you're going to lift the chain up and over and set to the side of the uh, cylinder. So you'll push on the top of the cylinder with your fittings disconnected. You'll push this down as far as it can go, maybe an inch or two, and that will give you enough room to lift up the chain and set it to the side. Once you set it to the side, all you're going to do is simply grab the cylinder and pull it up and out. Here's the other side where we've already pulled that out. As you can see, we've got it up on the first safety notch, and it's holding there both sides. And we've already removed the cylinder. As you can see, it just sits in there, nothing holding it in there. It does have a little dimple in there, and the cylinder has a little knob, a little uh, nipple on it, and it sits right down into there. And you can see up here, we pulled the chain to the side, and we have a bar standing, sitting in there just to keep the chain from falling back down in. Uh, it's pretty easy to remove with one person, but it is probably, I don't know, a 50, 60 pound cylinder. Uh, but it is nice to have two people putting that cylinder back in. Now we'll take a look at the cylinder. All right, here's a look at the cylinder. They're all basically the same. Uh, cylinder consists of the bore, the rod, that goes inside the bore and the piston that runs up and down the bore. On this type of uh, hydraulic cylinder we use a roller on the top so that leaf chain rolls over that as the rod extends. When the rod extends it pulls the carriage up which raises the car. As you can see like I said in the bottom of this cylinder there's a little nipple and this sets right in the hole of the frame and here's where your fitting is, and usually that's about a 3H pipe, 3H pipe thread. So now we've taken a look at the cylinder. The next thing we're going to do is take this cylinder apart. Now up on this cylinder, some of them have a nut on the top, some of them have just a, a hole here. Now typically what you're going to do is, if you have a spanner wrench, uh, which is a wrench with uh, like a nipple on the end of it, You'll secure the cylinder in the vise, um, put your spanner wrench here, and turn this. Counterclockwise to come out, just like any other thing. If you don't have a spanner wrench, oftentimes uh, they'll have the cylinder in a vise, and you'll just use a hammer and a punch to break this loose, spin it out, and then take a look at the piston and the rod. 
All right, now we've got the cylinder secured in a vise, and we're going to separate the uh, piston and rod from the cylinder. Uh, I usually put an X or some kind of marking on there uh, so I know that uh, when I put it back together I want it pretty close to that mark. Alright, now I'm just going to take a uh, hammer and a punch because I don't have a span wrench of this size and it's usually not really tight but you give it a couple of good hits. Okay, and now it's broken loose. Now I just continue turning that around and this is where it will leak from, right here. Uh, it's got a little, uh, it's like an old fuel filter they used to use back in the uh, way before uh, most of you were ever born. Uh, it's a little uh, bronze piece uh, so when it, the seal does go bad it's going to come and leak out of this hole and this is an air vent so as the cylinder goes up it pushes the air out. So we're just going to continue screwing that on out. All right, now we're about ready to pull the rod and piston out of the bore. Screw that on out. Okay, that comes up. Now we're going to pull the piston and rod from the bore. Here's the rod. Your piston will be down in here, and that's where the seal goes. Pull this up kind of slow because there may be oil leaking above that, and you'd rather not get grounded. And I have an oil pan, drain pan underneath there to catch the oil that is going to leak out. All right. I removed the piston and rod from the bore. Now, generally, what I do is take some uh, solvent, carburetor cleaner, something like that, clean all inside that bore. I'm going to flush all the dirt that's in here down to the bottom of the bore and out the hole. Because you want to make sure that there's no uh, dirt, chunks of seal left in there because that will uh, make your new seal leak even faster. So once you've gotten that cleaned out, usually I take a rag with a piece of wood, screwdriver, run it up and down in there a few times to make sure that bore is clean, blow it out. Once it's clean, then I go and uh, correct my uh, piston and rod problem. Thank you. All right, now we're going to continue cleaning the uh, cylinder bore. Um, what we have here... Uh, is the cylinder off the lift, piston and rod removed, and now you're thinking, how am I going to clean inside there? Well, usually what I do is uh, take some carburetor cleaner, a little bit of solvent, something like that, squirt in there, try to get all the oil, everything flushed down to the bottom, and then after you've got all of it flushed down there, see how I've used a rag, and now I've got a plastic piece of uh, water pipe that I'm going to put down in there, so I can finish cleaning that bore. And I have a string so I can pull it back. Now I'm just going to go up and down a couple times, wrap it again. What I'm trying to do, if there's any dirt, debris, trying to push it to the bottom of the cylinder. Because as your uh, seal wears, it, it will deteriorate a little bit and some little pieces will come off. Uh, sometimes that's what causes your leak. The seal just deteriorates. But it's kind of like a cannon kind of deal or a gun. You're just going to uh, put a piece of rag in there on a stick, uh, something soft, and a piece of wire that won't scratch up the bore, a piece of string, and kind of push it and twist it down so all that contamination, if there is, dirty oil, 
goes to the bottom of the cylinder. Then look in. Make sure uh, there's no debris in there. Looks pretty good. Uh, now, before I'm done, I'm going to blow it out with a little bit of air and then put a rag over top of it so it stays clean and dry until I get ready to put the piston back into the board. All right, now we're going to take a look at the piston and rod. The seals are on the very end of the piston, which is here. This is a blocker ring or a wiper ring. Uh, your seal kit will not come with that. Your seal kit will come with the bottom ring on the piston, which actually seals off the hydraulic fluid, and the top ring, which is just a dust ring, which goes on the very top of the rod. This will go on the slider. This will go into here, and this goes on to here. Um, we're going to use a socket and an impact to take that nut off and pull the piston off, pull this down, put a new seal in here, put it back on, put a new seal in there, and put that back on. All right, now I've used the impact uh, to loosen up the nut. Now we just take the nut the rest of the way off. Pull our washer and our piston out. Okay. Our spacer. And our top. Now we're just going to use a screwdriver or our hands. Pull this top seal out. Wipe all this. Make sure there's no debris in there. And put the new seal in. This is just a dust seal. Some people won't replace this. Some people will. Take a little bit of the oil that's on here. Kind of put that on the rod. Slide this back on slowly. Make sure that the lip of the seal uh, goes up in there correctly. So kind of give it a little push and twist. Okay. And now our spacer. Okay. And now we've got to pull this seal off of the piston. Generally for that, I try to use a couple of screwdrivers. Uh, you do need to be careful where you don't tear the new seal. The old one's not so bad. Uh, you're just going to kind of work that in there. Sometimes I'll even cut it off there. Just depends on how bad it is to get off there. Sometimes this seal's a little firm. That's why a lot of times it's good to have that in a vise. You just want to make sure you don't scar anything up uh, when it's in the vise. All right. Now we're going to go and make sure that there are no uh, marks on this piston. And I'm going to clean that up with a little uh, steel wool. Alright, now I've cleaned the piston area up where the seal should go, uh, wiped it down, uh, made sure there was nothing else in there, no debris, no nicks, no nothing. Uh, you want just a little bit of oil on there uh, just to help slide that new seal on. Sometimes if the seal is really hard, uh, you'll soak it in uh, kind of hot water just for about a minute or two to make it kind of pliable. A lot of times the old seal is going to be a little more stiff. Uh, and sometimes, like I say, you, you may be better off to cut that off. But here's the new seal. We want to make sure the lip is facing your source of oil, just like any other seal. The oil is going to come in from the bottom, hit this seal, push the piston up. So I want to make sure the lip on this is facing down. Now I'm going to put this on here, kind of hold it, push it around. Try not to use any tools on this. If you do, you're probably going to scar up the seal and then you're just going to have to do this all over again. Okay, now we're good to put that back on there. 
our nut and our lock nut. Tight. And now we're ready to uh, put a little bit of lube on here and slide it back down into the board. All right, now we, earlier you'll, you've seen where we uh, cleaned the bore all up, put a rag on that, some more dust can get in there. We have our new seal on our piston. The bore is clean, the seal is new, and we put some new clean hydraulic oil around that seal so we can slide it in. Make sure you're using new hydraulic fluid for this. Otherwise, uh, you're just going to have more contamination in there and probably another leak. Okay, now you're going to slide this up and you want to kind of push this a little bit so it goes in and there we go takes a little bit of uh, prompting to get this in there because now you got to remember that bore is all dry okay screw this in Make sure you go all the way to the bottom, push out anything that might have been left in there. I'm going to screw this on down. This should screw in with your hands. Uh, you want to make sure there's you're not using a big pair of pliers or anything. If you do, you may be uh, cross threading and you want to make sure you definitely don't cross thread this. Okay, now we've got that all in. This is all the way in the bore. It's all the way in the bottom. Now we're going to do the same thing. We've got it all in there. It's down. We're close to where our mark was that we marked on there. Now I'm going to take my punch. exactly where our mark was before so now the cylinder is ready to install all right now we're about ready to install the cylinder uh, as you've noticed I put a heavy weight here to hold the chain uh, kind of tight so I can slide the cylinder in another trick that I've learned is to in the back corner there put a little wire tie to hold up your chain on that side that way as you slide the cylinder down it needs to go right in between that chain. Uh, part of it needs to go to the back of the cylinder, part of it needs to go to the front of the cylinder. Uh, so I put that wire tie there to kind of hold it to the back. I put the heavy weight to kind of hold it in the front. And now we're getting ready to uh, install the cylinder. Now you can see I've installed the cylinder into the carriage, into the mast. And what we what we're going to do now is hook up our uh, fittings on the bottom, uh, supply oil to it, and make sure it goes up and down. When you drop your cylinder, I don't want to say drop. When you place your cylinder in the carriage, make sure the chain is split, some to the back, some to the front, and the bottom of the cylinder has that little nipple that needs to go in the hole in the bottom of the mast, in the bottom of the upright. So once you have that all the way in there, make sure your hole for the fitting is facing the back side and your roller for the chain is facing the front side. Uh, usually I line that up before I drop the cylinder in, 
but if you forget to, you can always uh, drop the cylinder in, line up the hole, put the fitting in the back. Once the fitting is in the back, then you can come and turn the rod so the uh, chain guide is correct. Now, uh, once I've got the cylinder in there, which I do have, now all I need to do is cut my wire tie, lift the chain up over the top of uh, the roller, and connect up my, my fittings, and I'm ready to go. Now, as you can see, uh, the cylinder is in place. My chain is lifted up over top of the roller. And now uh, I'm going to go to the other side, install my fittings, connect my hoses, and then uh, we'll get this baby working. All right, the cylinder is in place. Now we're going to connect up the lines. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is make sure our fittings that go in there are clean and ready to install and there's no uh, debris inside of them. Uh, so I've already kind of blown this off, made sure there was nothing inside because a lot of times um, a piece of dirt or debris will get in there and it can tear up that seal. So I use a little bit of uh, plumber's uh, pipe sealant and this is a regular uh, 3H taper uh, pipe thread so you always want to run this the direction that the threads go. You can use uh, Teflon tape. Uh, pipe dope seems to work about the best. Just want to put a little bit on there and then run it the direction of the thread. You don't need a lot but you need a little bit and do the same thing on the other side. And like I say when you're done you're going to give that a little wrap the directions of the thread. Try not to get any into the hole and this will take a three quarter inch wrench so I need to line this up in here and screw it in. Screw it in as far as you can by hand and then use the three quarter wrench And you want to make sure this is fairly tight. You know, maybe uh, 40 or 50 foot pounds. If you're not familiar with that, like maybe uh, twice as tight as you'd put in a spark plug, something like that. You do want to make sure it's nice and tight, otherwise, it'll leak out the bottom of the fitting. All right. Got that in there. Now just a little more pipe dope around that. And now you're going to put in your elbow. Now on this you want to make sure it's clean on the inside so no debris in there. And on this it screws onto here so that pipe dope will seal, will seal that up. This is a taper seat so you do not use any pipe sealing of any type onto this. Um, and you're going to put that on there and you're going to tighten that up so the fitting is facing straight upward so you can connect your hose. Here again you're going to want this about 50 foot pounds and just make sure uh, it's not too loose because it will leak you're looking at about 2,500 PSI out of this pump and that can shoot some oil if you don't have it nice and tight. Or maybe uh, you'll come in the next day and there'll be a little bit of oil uh, around the base of the machine and that's usually because uh, you didn't have it quite tight enough. All right. Now just make sure fitting here. There's no dirt or debris in that. Tighten that fitting up. 
three quarter inch wrench. Don't go too tight because you can split this fitting there and then have to put a new hose on there. All right, and now we'll be ready to test the unit. All right, cylinder installed, fittings connected, systems full of oil. Now we're going to hit the go button. All right, now we're uh, going to raise it up and verify we don't have any leaks. Now you're going to have to go up and down a couple of times to make sure you bleed any and all air out of that system that might be in there. To save time on the video, I'll do that off camera and uh, we'll take a look. Thanks. All right, now the cylinder's installed. Now this little brass uh, vent right here, uh, that's where air escapes as the piston is going up. And if it is leaking, that's where your hydraulic fluid is going to come from first, is that little uh, brass filter right there. So you can see, no leak. So we've done our job. Now we're going to lower and raise this a few times just to make sure we, we have all of our air out of the system. Other than that, uh, it's a done job. Now uh, in reality you can uh, change the seal without pulling the cylinder. Uh, I like to pull it out just to double check make sure everything's good but most of the time you'll be able to uh, have the lift all the way lowered, the weight off, loosen this up with a punch like I said, pull that piston and rod right out of there replace the seal, put it back in without even removing the cylinder. But you, even if you do not remove the cylinder, you want to loosen your fittings on the bottom and make sure you clean and blow all that debris out. All the dirty oil, any remnants of a busted seal, a metal shaving from a uh, pipe fitting, something like that. You want to make sure that is absolutely clean with clean fluid before you put that back together. Don't forget toolsplus1.com toolsplus1.com with any questions. Uh, we also sell parts and we'll be glad to tell you uh, helpful hints over the phone. Thank you.